Welcome, everybody. I'm Josh. I'm an engineering manager for Uber Eats. Who's used Uber Eats? All right. All right. Who's hungry? All right. Yeah, we, all right. we did all right. Okay. So Uber Eats, let's start with a history. A lot of startups bill themselves as Uber for X. I'm sure you hear that all the time. Well, it turns out Uber themselves, us, we also were doing this. We were also exploring Uber for X. We have a organization called Uber Everything. It's an internal incubator of sorts that we were trying different ventures. First, back in early 2014, we actually launched Uber Rush. This is a bike courier service where we could actually deliver really anything. Uh, we learned a lot from this. It's actually still available in select cities today. One thing that we learned was actually the most popular item that people would have delivered was food. We also learned a lot of just insights in terms of how deliveries work. Later in 2014, we launched two new ventures, Uber Essentials, which is that corner store uh, service, as well as Uber Fresh. This was pre-made food that you could get delivered instantly within minutes, very limited options delivered within minutes. While Uber Essentials didn't quite find that product market fit, Uber Fresh definitely showed a lot of really good possibilities. In fact, a year later, it was renamed Uber Eats, but not quite the Uber Eats that you know today. So let's go through Eats over the years. First on the left here, who remembers this, this old ride screen? This is the Uber Rides app. All right, we got a few people. Uh, there is Eats. Up on the top, you can see a, a way to toggle it. And then down here, we would actually show that lunch menu. This was those instant, very limited options. We had a bunch of cars driving around with pre-made food. In the middle here, this was a momentous occasion. This was actually a, a little bit more than two years ago. This was the Uber Eats standalone app. Why did we decide to break away from the Rides app and build our, our own? A couple reasons. One, we actually were moving beyond kind of that instant limited choice model to a food delivery marketplace. This was where you actually could choose your restaurants, go ahead and customize your order, and you'd get it delivered. Over here on the right is more or less the Uber Eats that you hopefully know and love today. Uh, while we've moved away from that instant model, we've really leaned in on this three-sided marketplace. Let's take a look. So here we are. We have our eaters down here, our drivers or delivery partners. Sometimes we still call them couriers from the Uber rush days. And then of course we have the restaurants. One thing that's interesting is when you think about Uber and the rides business, supply, demand, riders, drivers, Uber Eats introduces that third side, right? The restaurants, we didn't really have any kind of equivalent to that. Let's walk through each app. And for each, I'm going to kind of talk about what's unique about it and what do we have to get right. The Eater app. So this one is for, again, our consumers. It's just like the rides business. Those would also be our consumers or our demand. However, completely different, completely different experience. This one, because it's a marketplace, it's a very different interaction model. You're doing a lot of browsing. You have to find what you're looking for, sorting, filtering. Very, very different. In fact, there's actually not a lot that we share with the Rides app beyond things like your sign up, your login, account management, payments, things like that, where in those cases, we'll actually build common reusable libraries that we can share across the board. So for the Eater app, what do we got to get right? Well, first and foremost, you got to find what you're looking for. Today, we have about over 100,000 restaurants on the platform. So actually finding the right restaurant is more and more difficult. To uh, allow for that, we actually are trying to build our mobile app to be able to be very flexible, uh, server-driven. So when you think about things like our lists, our feed, our carousel, we're going to have to expose a lot of restaurants. We do a lot of experimentation, A-B tests. We do a lot with relevance and personalization. We have a lot of machine learn algorithms to actually figure out what you may want. And so we have to actually build that in a way to facilitate the server. Similarly, on the restaurant menu side, with 100,000 restaurants, it's really hard to standardize. Restaurants could have tons of sections, 
They could have all these different menus. Maybe there's a breakfast menu, a dinner menu. It's really hard to be able to understand that. Not to mention combinations, customizations. If you've ever ordered a pizza uh, through Uber Eats and you want half and half, it gets very complex. And so we've also built our menu in that kind of scalable, flexible UI way where we can actually have it be server driven, have our ops teams that are around the world help us out, have our restaurants be able to upload what they want. Next up, like Uber, Uber Eats is very hyper-local. Well, we talk a lot about how we're, we're super global, we're in hundreds of cities around the world, and maybe we're in your city, but actually it, it doesn't matter if we're in your city. What matters is, it, are we in your neighborhood? What's the supply and demand in your general vicinity? That's actually what matters. And the power of Uber is that we have folks that live. And one thing we've learned actually over the years in the last two years of Uber Eats, our users demand extra. They, they demand that, that transparency, that uh, awareness of what's going on in their order. And this is also an opportunity to get that magic right. So we, we've thought a lot about the actual real time or our delivery view and making sure it's real time. So we've architected in a way where it's push based. We can push up eat the restaurant app. All right, so this is for our restaurant partners. Again, in over 100,000 restaurants around the world. We wrote it in React Native. And again, this has no equivalent. So first and foremost, this is a, an enterprise app. It's also a newer, being a newer venture, we needed that rapid experimentation iteration. So we actually started as a web. We soon found out that, you know, there actually is critical things we need that's native. It's at, having that access to the hardware. Sound is super important. Restaurants are loud. Being able to alert the staff that an order has come in is being able to print receipts. And so after a lot of discussion, the team landed on React Native. It was actually a really good trade-off between having the flexibility and rapid improvements, a little bit more control over. Another thing that might be very different from your worlds is the sessions here, really long lived. I mean, we're talking days. You open the app and it doesn't close. If, if something crashed, it might be hours before you actually found out. So the team has to be extra careful. Lastly, this is not the app on your phone that you get personally attached to and you know all the ins and outs. This is a very much, this app is used by many, many people. It's hard to even predict who would be using it. And as a result, you actually have to figure out, can you design it in a way that's, all right, the driver app. For our driver and delivery partners, uh, notice I said driver app, not delivery app, not courier app. One thing that's cool, and partly why Uber Eats has been successful so far, is we've been able to leverage the millions of drivers on the rides platform. And if you think about it, a lot of the behavior is very similar, but of course, there's a lot that we have to features in there. For example, verification of orders. You're going to the re into your restaurant, picking out the order. Uh, we have custom UIs to figure out, have they ordered everything on the screen? When you're delivering, we have to often consider things like getting a signature. We had to, a lot of our delivery partners are actually on bikes. Sometimes they walk, they're on scooters. They actually do not have access to a place to actually charge their phone. This is something you often don't think about. Uh, in the car, you might have that option. So we actually have to be pretty aware of what our battery usage is like. Uh, Phil talked about being able to do a push model. To, and probably the most important thing is actually drivers or delivery partners have to actually find these restaurants. Um, this is far more complex than rides. Uh, Phil talked about locations. And he talked about, hey, just dry, you know, drop people off at the corner. No big deal. It, it doesn't work for delivery. Restaurants could be in a mall. It could be up, you know, five, five stories. There's parking you have to consider. And then when you're dropping it off to the actual eater, you got apartment numbers. The accuracy is imperative here. You have to actually find them. Uh, and it's, it's far more complex. We actually have a dedicated team that only thinks about addresses. Addresses are hard. They're hard in the U.S., and the U.S. might be the easiest place. You start talking about other places internationally, like India, it's very, very difficult. We need to work closely with our MAPS team to actually get this right. Same thing with partner or parking. You can see we've enhanced the uh, navigation view. We've worked with that team to provide a little bit more insight on, on where they can go. One thing cool we've also done is we've worked with Bluetooth 
to have these beacons. You know, it's, it's been super useful so far. And lastly, we have this native in-app chat solution. So this is all about being able uh, to find the eaters. If there is something wrong, you want to be able to get that. Um, so Uber Eats, we are using technology to actually impact many human beings. We have our eaters, our restaurants, and our delivery partners. There's this three-sided dance that happens every time you want to order food. We are trying to figure out how do we help this technology to make that dance that, that much more seamless. And Uber Eats, we're, we're just getting started. Like I mentioned, this is a two-year-old venture. Uh, it's been extremely successful so far. And frankly, there's a lot to go. We have a, we're going to be expanding continually uh, across the globe. And frankly, we need folks like yourself to help join us on this journey. Thank you.